We think he's the perfect fit for uh, what we're building here, uh, who he is as a person, uh, his winning pedigree, and certainly the talent as a player. Uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, Kip and his team, our scouting group, for doing a tremendous job uh, this year as we uh, got into the draft. Um, we were extremely well prepared. And uh, when we had the opportunity to draft um, Wyatt, um, we just our scouts had done such great jobs, great background work, uh, that we were ready to, to act and move there. So uh, thanks to Kip, everybody who uh, internally who contributed to this year's draft. And certainly uh, thank you to Wyatt and his family for, uh, for um, wanting to be here as Texas Rangers. With that, I'll turn it over to Kip. Yeah, thanks, CY. Yeah, no, we're, we're super excited. Uh, pretty much an easy choice for us this year when, when Wyatt got there. Uh, did extensive amount of work on Wyatt, and you know we see here and talk about his allocates on the field and and all that. But I, I want to talk about the person, and that's what separated Wyatt from a lot of the guys in that upper part of the group. It's just like the story he came from, the hard work, the dedication. It's what we're about here as the Rangers, and, and he fits very well with the uh, uh, you know what we're going to win championships here, and Wyatt's going to be a big part of that. And excited to bring him on board. I, I kind of want to recognize the family, uh, Father Michael, you know Michael, uh, Mother Maria. Uh, Sister Sienna, fiance Hallie, and uh, the great Aunt Liz. <laughs> <laughs> great Aunt Liz. <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys coming uh, and sharing this moment with us. It's a very exciting time with the Rangers. And uh, I also want to recognize a couple of our scouts here in the back of the room. John Wiedenbauer, uh, first year scout with the Texas Rangers, gets a first round pick. Good job, Weedy. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding work. I put us in a really good position, uh, you know. With all the background work and, and how many times you saw Florida, I think it was probably quite a few. And Arthur McConaughey, who's our uh, Southeast cross checker, Arthur did a tremendous job also uh, with Wyatt. But uh, no, we're we're super excited. Like I said, um, did a lot of work on on the group up top, and and like like I said, Wyatt got to us, and we like we're ecstatic. So uh, happy moving forward and get him out there. He's ready to go, right? Yep. All right. So. Welcome White Lankford, New Texas Rangers. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all it's all happened so fast. I mean, I feel like I was in the middle of my season just a few weeks or a few days ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, this moment's finally here. Um, it's a little surreal right now, but you know, I'm super excited to just be here. Do you put timelines, goals set for yourself? How quickly you wanna you wanna call this the long term home? Um, well, I'm really hoping this is my long term long term home right now. But I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, not really. Um, I'm still kind of just getting used to it, and I'm just uh, I'm ready to go out and play baseball, and then we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, Lawrence Dow, Fort Worth Star Telegram. What do you want Texas Rangers fans to know about? You know, what type of player, what type of person you are? Yeah, I mean, I, I want everyone to know that I'm just a hard worker. I mean, I go out there and I, I give it my best effort every time I go out on the field. And um, I want to do everything I can to help the team win and um, perform to the best of our ability. Hey, Wyatt, John Radigan. I'm wondering um, if it's reported correctly, you were kind of hoping it would play out this way as things were falling. Why? What made you want it to work out this way? Yeah, I mean, um, 
here in Ar Arlington, I mean, it's it's hard to beat a place like this here in Texas. Um, I mean, compared to just some of the other places, this is a, one place that I really would, would have liked to end it up, and it's kind of just how it played out, and um, I'm just really excited to be here. And see why for you, there's been a lot of reason to smile this season, but the smile seems pretty big and pretty genuine here today with this announcement and this signing. What makes you so excited about, you know, the future with Y? Well, I think it's um, not often you have the opportunity to um, draft a player as accomplished as Wyatt. And certainly our goal is not to be picking at the top of the draft ever again. Uh, but that said, this was a great year to be picking at the top of the draft. And some things fell our way to move up in the draft order. Um, and then within the draft specifically, uh, things fell our way to be able to land Wyatt. And um, you know his, his pedigree as a baseball player um, and what he did uh, at Florida is tremendous. But I think as we got to know the person, the character, uh, why he's a successful player, it's all the intangibles, the things that we love, the things that you see with our big league team, the things that our minor league players all embody. Um, he's the perfect fit for our organization. And um, I, I just I couldn't be happier that he's a Texas Ranger. Right, uh, Kennedy Landry, MLB.com. We talked to you on draft night about kind of your journey, but now that you're here, you've signed. Can you reflect on you know going to Florida, and not really playing a lot as a freshman, and then those last two seasons you had, and you know to even get to this place at, at, that you're at? Yeah, I mean it all went by so fast. Um, I feel like I was first stepping onto campus in the fall just a few days ago. Um, but man, I can't. I couldn't have had a better college experience. I mean, even though I didn't play my freshman year, that that kind of made me who I was. I mean, um, having to go through that and then having the ability to go out there and play for two years is was, was my dream. Is dream come true, and it's got me to where I am today. Hey, White, uh, Sean McFarland, Dallas Morning News. Kip and CY both talked about your, your makeup, your personality, your, your mindset, and all that. Where did that come from, and you know how how has that become so embodied into who you are? Yeah, I mean, I've always been competitive, and I think that's just kind of how it how it's um, came about. Um, growing up, I played every sport I could, really. So, I mean, I always went out there and tried to win, and I gave it my best effort all the time. And for you, what's it like joining a team now, a first place team, a team that looks committed to winning? What is that like joining an organization in that mode? Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better team to have ended up that. I mean, Rangers are heading in a very good direction. And I'm excited to be a part of it. Kip, for you and your staff, is it more work when you do have such a high pick as far as the due diligence that you have to do? I know you try to do it up and down, but when, you, when you've got such a high pick and you know you're going to get a really good player, does it make it a little more challenging, if that makes sense? We, we've been up there like the last three years now. CY says we're not going to be there anymore. So, But yeah, I mean, probably my work's a little different than, than normal up there. I probably see these guys more than... I wouldn't a normal year if we're picking, let's say, 25 or something like that. So, um, but I, I think it's it's we do our work on every player, the process we go through, and it's not any different. Uh, if you're picking higher, you're picking 25, right? But I think probably I don't I don't feel the pressure as much when, when we pick high. But I mean, it is high, and we had we had access to players probably we're not going to have access to here moving forward. So it's kind of it's fun, obviously, and and it's going to be a little different here moving forward, picking a little lower. But that's okay. But I, I'd say the process is the same. We kind of go through that in every player. Every year and see why how do you craft a plan um, for why it moving forward in the short term and in the long term yeah, Emily, I think first and foremost, um, we'll get Wyatt out to Arizona with the rest of our draft class, uh, go through the um, standard onboarding process. Um, we'll, we want to make sure that from a physical standpoint, uh, Wyatt's prepared to go play. Um, but we uh, we think he is. By the looks of him, he is. And uh, he certainly uh, indicated to us he's ready to get out. So, um, But we do want to make sure we um, do right by Wyatt and um, set him up for success. He's had a little time off here. and uh, But we'll, we're likely to get him out. Um, you know, sometime in the next few weeks, and uh, I'm sure he's anxious to get started. John Moore with Rangers today. This for CY and Kip. Uh, used to before the new setup of the draft, these guys were still playing when the draft happened. This time, the draft was over. How much more exciting is it to see him get on the big stage? And he performed. He did well in the College World Series. He did well in that championship series. Uh, the big lights didn't do anything. Is it more comforting? I don't know what's more coming. We, we, put, we put so much time and effort in, in Scout and Wyatt, and that's like icing on the cake at the end. But I think 
really in reality probably our minds are made up before that, but it's always good to see and makes you feel a little better and uh, that he's out there performing on the big stage like the College World Series. So, um, But if he wouldn't have been there and Florida didn't make it, I don't think it would have made us feel any different, though. Yeah, I think given just the state of SEC baseball, um, you know, you're really playing on the big stage every weekend. And um, so I, I don't think we had any questions in terms of can he handle um, the, the biggest stage. And certainly he went to the College World Series and showed everybody that there is no reason to question that. So, um, no, I think that, um, you know, our scouts did a tremendous job. As I said, Kip and his team, um, we knew everything I think there was to know about Wyatt and uh, why he was a great fit for the Texas Rangers. And we had no concerns whether he played in the College World Series or not. Um, we're very excited to see him get out and playing soon. Stephen Stevenson, as I Kip, how quickly did he get on y'all's radar? Um, his sophomore year, did he skyrocket in your projections? and? Uh, he obviously he didn't didn't get to play much his freshman year, so uh, the year he had as a sophomore was like eye opening. You know, I mean, it was like tremendous year, and not many guys have that path that Wyatt had. Like, don't play that much as a freshman and and perform like he did as a sophomore. So obviously, after the, after his sophomore year, he was during his sophomore year, he was on our radar for sure. Wyatt, Jared Sandler, Rangers Radio. Uh, okay, so the freshman year, you've been asked about that, but what what did you do during that year? between freshman and sophomore year to grow as a player to be ready for the sophomore year that you ended up having? Yeah, I mean, I just did kind of everything uh, that everyone else did. I mean, I did all the practice, all the workouts and stuff. But, I mean, I feel like I put in just a lot of extra time as well, and that kind of is what just helped me excel and be ready to play whenever I got my chance. Was there a part of your game that, in feedback with the coaching staff, they're like, hey, we need you to get better at this or anything specific? I mean, I feel like the biggest thing was just the uh, position change going to outfield and just having that, um, getting the opportunity to get in the lineup somewhere. And then whenever I got that opportunity, I just took advantage of it. And then in terms of your power, what's helped you tap into your power and, and have it play out the way it has? Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like a lot of it just um, came with becoming more mature. And I mean, obviously the, the strength and um, all that has came along as well. In college, we had a really good strength coach. So that helped a lot as well. But um, a lot of it is just kind of natural, I guess, too. So, And see why you talk about the, the players you want uh, to build this organization around. You got a guy who kind of self-made, didn't have it all handed to him the day he stepped foot on campus. What do you learn about a guy like that, and how did that maybe impact your thought process? Well, I mean, first of all, Jared, I would say that most players who get to the big leagues and have success are self-made. I mean, some have more talent than others, but by and large, you have to work to get here, and you have to be able to um, do a lot of things off the field um, in terms of um, your, your ability to um, perform. And so I think that um, you know, Wyatt embodies all of that. But I think that what I love is just – I think his college coach, Coach Sullivan, Coach O'Sullivan said it best is that he's a championship player. And um, I think that's what it boils down to is we're trying to fill our organization with championship players. And um, and certainly we um, think why it is that and, um, and he's going to add to the group we have and what we're building here. When did this all become a reality for you? Did somebody tell you? when you were playing Little League, high school, that this could happen for you? Or was it college? Or when did it, was there one day that stuck out that told, your, told yourself, hey, I can do this? Yeah, I, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, um, I mean, it was honestly probably college. Um, obviously, going through my freshman year, I, I really didn't have any expectations, kind of, because I was like, man, I just, I just want to play on the college stage first. So um, I'd say probably about halfway through my sophomore year when I was playing really well and people started talking and stuff like that, I kind of realized that, hey, I, I have a really good shot. Why well, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. See why kind of address the SEC part of it. But what is it that this, you're the four straight SEC guy the Rangers are taking with their top pick, but what is it about playing in that league prepares you for making the step up to professional baseball? Yeah, I mean, that league is, uh, man, it's just really good baseball. Every single weekend, there's no there's no off weekends at all, no matter who you play. Um, the pitching, the hitting, the lineups, everything about it is just um, another another level, really. Like, going into the um, the weekends we play before the SEC series start, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it looks a lot different. So it's it was a really good experience. 
quiet Madison Hawk Valley Sports Southwest. It seems like everyone who's coached you, recruited you, scouted you, say that you're the hardest worker in the room. How much pride do you take in knowing that your work ethic is, is how everyone is speaking about you? Yeah, that means a lot to me. I mean, I feel like that's one of the parts of my game that has really got me to the position I am now. So um, being able to use that and um, being able to make it like kind of rub off on other guys and maybe make guys work harder as well, um, I feel like that's a big part of a winning team also. So. You also come from a very special hometown. You have a lot of family here supporting you today. What does it mean to you to be able to represent that hometown? It means a lot. I mean, I know I have a lot of people back home following me, so being able to um, be that person that people look up to and look at to um, for some motivation or just anything, it means a lot to me. Wyatt, were you, were you a catcher your freshman year in Florida? I was, yes. So can you walk us through that – how that went down and uh, and you made the move? Yeah, I mean, I, well, growing up, I was always a catcher, so I got recruited to Florida as a catcher, and then um, I just really didn't have a spot to really get in the lineup at, at catcher, so they, they the coaches decided to move me to the outfield and give me a shot out there, and then it kind of just went from there. I never really caught again. And we have no plans to catch him right now. <laughs> just so in case somebody has to ask. Todd was going to ask, I think. <laughs>